Zelda can't even jump, but with this accessory, she can do that. Swim faster, this accessory helps her go even faster. Hit the grass and have fairies just show up, well, this accessory also does that. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get a bunch of accessories to make Zelda a lot more OP in the game. The first accessory that we'll be going for is going to be inside of the Southern Ruins dungeon on the second floor. If you go to this specific location and open up this chest, you'll be getting yourself a heart pin and pretty much this is an early game nice accessory that just allows hearts to appear a little more often in your game. The only other dungeon accessory is going to be the frog ring which is going to be located during the mid game portion where you go to Hyrule Castle located on this floor basement 2 and when you open up this chest right over here this is where you'll pick up your frog ring and pretty much what the frog ring allows you to do is just jump higher than you usually do. Normally, you would have to transform from Zelda into the sword fighter form to get the height, but with this, you can just do it with Zelda automatically, and it is fantastic way of making traveling so much easier and makes her so useful now. So definitely a top accessory when you get it. And the crazy part is when you go into sword fighting form, that jump is even higher when you have that equipped. Just look how high I go. The next four accessories that I'll talk about are ones that you can purchase in the game. Keep in mind that you can only reach these shops after you get access to the entire map. So pretty much just defeating the first dungeon in the game, which is in Southern Ruins, and then being able to go anywhere. The first one that we're going to talk about is the Zora Flippers, which is going to be located all the way at the top right of your map. You can head over to this warp point, enter the shop, and then purchase the Zora Flippers for 350 rupees. What this is going to allow you to do is let Zelda swim a lot faster. Here's what it's like when you're not using it. Here's what it looks like when you are using the flippers. It's, so it's just a little bit of a speed up. The next one is going to be the Gerudo Sandals. And you can get the Gerudo Sandals by warping over to Gerudo Village and then proceeding into the shop right over here on your map. And you'll see that there are Gerudo Sandals there that you can purchase for 400 rupees. Purchase that and then what's going to happen is you'll be able to not sink in the sand. So when you walk into anything that looks like quicksand or interact with it zelda will just start to go down and down and down but when you have these you can pretty much just run around all of the quicksand and never have to drown out in it the next accessory can be found by warping towards hyrule castle and entering the shop in the shop you'll see that there is a stone anklet over here which is going to cost 400 rupees to show you an example of what this does here is a stone moblin throwing its spear at me without the stone anklet and here's what it's like when I'm wearing the stone anklet, which is going to reduce the knockback from this attack. The next accessory is going to be found in Kakariko Village. And by going to this waypoint and then making your way into this shop, you'll be able to see something called the climbing band, which is more expensive than the other ones. And it costs 500 rupees to get this. What this is going to do is allow you to climb ladders and rocks a lot faster. So here's an example of me climbing this rock wall without it. And here's an example of me climbing the rock wall with it. If you compare the two, you can see it really just speeds it up. It's almost equal to how the Zora flippers work. The next two accessories are going to require us to have something that can explode. This can be the bomb that you get in the game, the zero echo, or the bomb fish. But the one that's easiest to get, in my opinion, is going to be located right over here at uh, this specific spot in Elden Volcano. And this echo is the zero, which is just a flying enemy that spits out bombs. After you get that, just south of the Elden Volcano is going to be a waypoint and you just have to make your way all the way to this spot where you'll see a cracked wall and then throw out your zero it's going to bomb the entrance and you're going to go inside and get yourself a fairy flower now when you equip this fairy flower what it's essentially going to do it's just going to make fairies appear more often so let's say i'm chopping the grass here you'll see fairies show up now the other accessory that we're going to have to bomb a wall to get something from is located all the way in the jabul water area and it's going to be located up here in the top left area at this location again just take out your zero or whatever way you have to bomb the entrance and that's it it'll open up and you'll be able to pick up your silver brooch accessory and that's going to allow you to make rupees appear a little more often when you're breaking objects or defeating monsters. The next accessories are going to require you to defeat an enemy in order for the chest to appear. The first one is going to be the spin brace, which is going to be located in the Farron wetlands over here in this cave. 
When you go inside of here, you're going to move this enemy by binding it, turning it around and beating it up and then going up this ladder. After you get up the ladder, you want to go all the way to the very, very top and then you'll be able to take out the Dark Nut level three. After you defeat it, a treasure chest will then show up with the accessory in it called spin brace which allows you to spin and i think they were trying to do something because a dark nut spins around too anyway what the spin brace is going to do is allow you to have a little bit of a stagger on the enemy so if you look at this clip here's where i just roll into an enemy you see there's nothing crazy happening but when i equip the spin brace here's how it looks you can see that they staggered just a little bit and have to regain reaction time to attack you again. The next accessory can be found all the way up here in the Hebra mountain area. If you go through this entire snow moblin camp, melt these icebergs and go around to this corner, enter this cave and you will find a sword moblin level three here. Once you take out the sword moblin level three, a chest will appear that will have the energy belt in it. What the energy belt is going to do is just increase the amounts of energy that these dark monsters get that come from the rift that way you can get back into your sword fighter form fast or maintain being in the sword fighter form the next accessory is also going to be up in the hebra region going to be located right over here in this cave once you go inside of here you're going to proceed a little bit further and then you're going to have to fight a bunch of enemies and once you defeat all these enemies the chest will show up at the end of the room and if you open that up it'll be the ice spike accessory ice spikes are going to be really nice because it allows you to not slip on ice because normally when your character is running around on the ice they are going to just slip and it gets a little annoying when you need to maintain traction the next one is the energy glove which is the lower tier version of the energy belt but all items can stack together so you can combo it if you want to get a lot more energy back this is found by going into the gerudo desert and heading to this location where you're going to have to fight a bunch of enemies but once you take it out that chest is actually going to unlock it's actually already there it just unlocks and when you open it up inside you'll get yourself an energy glove the next four accessories are going to require you to finish challenges in order to get them. And we'll first start at Kakariko Village in the sleeping dojo all the way to the left. I mean the slumber dojo, but you get what I mean. For this, pretty much you're going to have to do the challenges that the dojo master offers you. And the way these challenges work is you'll start off with some of them that are already there when the first time you arrive. But later on in the game, as you complete specific dungeons, they will unlock specific specific challenges. When you complete the blank state battle wind minigame, your reward is going to be the first mastery. What the first mastery does is pretty much just slow energy loss when you're in sword fighter form. And the cool part about being in this dojo and doing the various challenges is that you get newer ones that are much more powerful as you keep going. Like the second mastery that comes after you've completed eight minigame challenges. And then the final mastery that comes after completing 14 minigames game challenges. I also do want to mention the slumber dojo is a really important area in the game in general because you're able to get a katana that I get to show off in my automaton video that gets you a roboblin that slices enemies and destroys them. You can check out that video on the channel for that as well as if you finish all the dojo challenges you get a really cool outfit but I'll let you check out my outfit video to see how to get that. Anyway moving on let's talk about the next accessory which requires you to have access to Zelda's horse in the game. Now in order to even have this access you're going to have to be in the midpoint of the game which means it's going to be after the hyrule dungeon you'll initiate a quest line with impa right there and then which will bring you towards the ranch and will then bring you towards a rift and after you complete that rift you then go back to the ranch but you at least you'll have the ability to start summoning the horse because you now learn the echo of the carrot anyway once you have the echo of the carrot and the horse you have to ride into the hyrule ranch on top of your horse and then talk to this lady over here who then will tell you about the flag races that they have the goal is to get through every single flag race until you arrive at the long course and for the long course you must beat it under 40 seconds which i for some reason struggled with but you all can let me know if you struggled with this or not but here's the run that i did that helped me complete it if for some reason anything i do in this one makes sense
you'll then receive your charging horn. And I couldn't believe it, but up to this point in the game, I didn't even know that the horse can ram into enemies and do damage to them. And what this charging horn does is just increase the amount of damage you do when you charge at an enemy or just go charge in general. You can literally see me knocking out enemies with the horse. I did not know this was a thing. Kind of mind blown by it, but that's what the charging horn does. Now let's talk about all the accessories that you can get via side quest. This next quest also takes place in the Jabul water area and you need to complete the dungeon for this as well. And you have to head over to this house all the way up north where you find a Zora child. If you go inside this house over here, you'll talk to her and she's going to ask you to bring her some monsters. And pretty much you just have to have these specific echoes. The first monster they have to show her is a sinister fish. So you just have to echo out a tangler. After that, she's going to ask you for a monster that goes boom where anyone goes near it. And you just have to pull out a bomb fish echo to advance that part of the quest. After that, she's going to ask you about a shocking jellyfish monster. And of course, you just have to bring out the brill in order to finish this quest. After that, there'll be a little cutscene that I'm just going to skip past, but she'll then hand you the Zora scale. This next accessory can be found in the Gerudo Desert, but it's going to require you to do a side quest called the Wild Sandstorms. Now, here's what's interesting. You have to completely clear the rifts, temple, dungeon in the area. And on top of that, you have to go around the desert and find these little sandstorms that take place and then find the cause of those sandstorms, which are known as Lanmolas. And these are these creatures that will come out. They look like giant centipedes. And there's two fights that you're going to have to do when you get them. Now, they're really easy to take out. They're going to throw rocks at you as they come out of the sand and go into the sand when you want to take them out is when they go into the sand and start throwing the rocks at you what you want to do is use your bind ability and pull it out and then just whack them and rinse and repeat and that's how you take down a lamola now once you take down two and then you go to gerudo town and walk into this building you'll find two soldiers that are training here and just swinging their weapons doing nothing and that's when the side quest wild sandstorm will happen where it's pretty much about taking down a third lamola that's really powerful then you you just have to head right back into the desert, find the sandy area. You'll see the little mound show up and then this Lenmola will pop up. This happened to me all the way in the right corner of the desert. Now, this one was a little more hard because every time it would come out of the ground, it summoned the stupid scorpion echo and the stupid fish that jumps up. So when you try to pull, those enemies will hit you. So you're not allowed to pull and the fight goes on for quite a bit. So I eventually just had to throw a range echoes behind me. So whenever the Lenmola came up, they would take out the enemies. That way I'll be able to pull it and when you finish all that you head back to those two two people in the gerudo town and eventually after all that you'll be given the gold sash now the cool thing about the gold sash is that it allows you to not be moved by any wind so for example here's what happens when wind blows you in the game when you equip the gold sash, here's what it looks like. You literally can just fly through all of these little puzzles and areas without getting blown away. This side quest is going to be for the Goron's Bracelet. And this side quest will be located up in the Elden Volcano area. If for some reason this is not appearing for you, make sure that you just clear the Elden Volcano dungeon and you should be good for this to show up. Now, pretty much you're going to have to go to this exact spot and talk to this NPC over here, who will then send you further north to the peak area. Talk to this NPC inside of this cave, then it'll be like this little mini dungeon where you have to get past all this lava and then face a boss that is extremely similar to the first one that you fought earlier. And the strategy for this guy is just to cool him down with using water attacks. It took me like 20 minutes to realize that's all I have to do. And then you just bind the orb on its head and pull it out. And it pretty much becomes the same boss from the first dungeon again. And that's pretty much it. After you beat it, you'll be able to get the Goron bracelet, which will allow you to carry things faster that's that's pretty much it you get a carry speed up with it here's what it looks like when you're carrying something and then here's what it looks like when you're wearing the goron bracelet and carrying something this next quest is going to be for the Might Bell. And in order to even get this started, you first have to make sure that you have completed the Elden Volcano Rift slash Dungeon. You then can head over to Lake Hylia and enter into where the Great Fairy is. When you walk in, you'll find a treasure chest towards the right side. You'll open up the chest and then you'll get a Might Crystal, which will cause the Great Fairy to come out the water. That will tell you about this accessory that can detect these exact same things you got from the chest in exchange 
change for something. Pretty much what's going to happen after this point is you're then going to head over to Gerudo Village, talk to a jeweler person, and they're going to tell you they need two items to make this jewelry, which is then going to end up sending you over to Outen Volcano area, where you're going to have to clear off a Lizalfos cage over here. And then once you do that, you're able to have someone help mine the first object for you as shown over here. And then you have to go all the way down to the Zora Village and go inside of the place and talk to the shopkeeper there who has the other item and essentially just wants you to make an unfortunate smoothie in exchange for that, which is really easy because they are the worst smoothie in the entire game. So if you do that, you get that item. Then you bring those two items all the way back to the jeweler where she's going to make you a lovely pendant. After you get that lovely pendant, you just head right back to the great fairy, give the great fairy that and the great fairy will give you the might bell that it's really useful because when you go around the area, it'll start to ring if it detects might crystals, which will help level up Link's sword fighters form level the sword, the bombs, and the arrow. So they can be much more stronger and deal more damage. The next accessory is going to be for the heart barrette, which is basically the better version of the heart pin that drops more hearts. This is also going to be taking place in the Gerudo Desert. So prerequisites in case it doesn't show up is just complete the Gerudo Desert Temple. And then you're going to want to head over to this house over here and talk to this person who is extremely terrified of beetles. And because I'm not a nice person, I threw up my echo of the beetle while she was in the house and she kind of freaked out a bit anyway what you have to do is head over to this specific location right over here in this cave walk inside and all you have to do is take down a bunch of these nests and when you do so the quest pretty much updates and you head back to the house talk to the person and that's how you're going to get the heart barrette and complete the beetle ballyhoo side quest so now get more hearts in the grass for the accessory gold brooch you're gonna have to do the side quest called secret chief talks side quest for that to even show up you're you're going to have to complete the main dungeon in the Jabul ruins. And once you're done with all the main story stuff and talking to both the chiefs of each specific village, you're then going to look for Drad at the River Zora village and talk to him. And then he's going to be wondering where the whereabouts of certain people are. Essentially, then that's going to have to lead you back all the way towards the Zora cave where you're going to find a lot of interactions of characters from this area talking. But then once all that is done, you are given the gold brooch i'm not going to spoil that story for you that's something you need to watch yourself because it's very wholesome and nice and the gold brooch is basically going to allow rupees to appear more often when you're breaking objects or defeating monsters do not forget that you can stack the gold brooch with the silver brooch to increase your rupee drops even more now there's even a better version of the fairy flower known as the fairy fragrance which is basically just more of a chance for fairies to show up now in order to get this you're going to have to do a side quest called looking for bempu which is only going to be available after you complete the Farin temple you'll find this npc located right in this spot where they're then going to do a hide and go seek game with you the first location that you'll find bempu is at the smoothie shop located right over here and all you have to do is just use bind to pull it out of the ground the second location is going to be at this heart lake down in the left below right above the lake go over there pull it and then it'll move to the third location which is going to be at a home where a rift used to be which is going to be located right over here and then the fourth location where it's going to be is over at this location right over here on your map after you do all this you'll then be given the fairy fragrance and you'll complete the side quests for bempu and now we've maximized the appearance of these fairies that way you can shove them in all your bottles that you got this next quest is going to be for the survey scope and is actually pretty simple all you have to do is approach a business scrub those are the guys that are the ones that make smoothies for you so when you initiate the quest they're going to request you to make them 10 recipes in total so what you have to do is essentially just combo all of the stuff you have and make a smoothie or a potion and see exactly what happens when you combine these drinks the only issue is not having enough of these items to create the smoothies but the easiest way if you just own three amiibos is to do the amiibo date skip spam technique which essentially you open up your settings menu you scan your three amiibo date skip scan through amiibo again and the items will just stack and stack and stack and then once you have enough items you can then keep mixing for smoothie recipes in order to get 10 recipes when you do that you'll be given the survey scope which will help smoothie ingredients and monster stones appear more often when you break objects or defeat monsters followed up by that you'll get another side quest by talking to him where he's going to want 20 more 
recipes and you do the exact same thing all over again and after making these 20 recipes you're then going to have your survey scope upgraded to survey binoculars and that's going to just have a more of a higher chance to find the smoothie ingredients and monster stones when you break objects or defeat monsters the next accessory is the ancient charm that can be found in the side quest let's play a game now in order to start this quest you can actually do it right away at the start of the game when you have access to the open world and in order to do that all you have to do is head over to this location called the eastern temple right over here all the way to the right of hyrule castle now when you go inside it is going to be an electric themed kind of dungeon slash temple and when you get to the very end of it there's going to be a boss that is a cloud now make sure that you either are electric resistant or you have echoes that are completely resistant to electricity like the tweelis this pretty much is you hit the cloud a couple of times it separates and then you have to maneuver a puzzle where you bring all the cloud pieces back together and then you beat it up again and pretty much when the cloud disappears you exit out the cave you talk to the guy who gave you the quest and you'll get the reward ancient charm which is actually going to give you damage reduction when you get hit by an enemy which is going to be very useful when it comes to hard hitting enemies now the ancient charm actually can get upgraded to something known as the curious charm much later in the game if you have completed the Farron wetlands dungeon this starts off by talking to this npc and the side quest cotton candy hunt starts to show up this will then have to bring you to this location over here where you then light up these torches by climbing up to a higher spot which will then move the statue and you'll be able to go down it now you can move the statue ahead of time and go down this area but the front door is going to be blocked but once you initiate that side quest then it's going to be removed and you can proceed further into this place called the hidden ruins now you can continue to explore this ruins and then you'll enter another room where you're going to have a rematch with the previous boss from the eastern temple and what's going to happen is it's just going to be a sideways version with platforms and everything so when you hit him he's going to split up and it's just pretty much another puzzle where you have to get all the clouds together and then after you beat that and turn in the quest you'll then be rewarded with the curious charm which is the upgrade of the ancient charm so you're gonna have lots of damage reduction now now this next accessory is called the clockwork bangle and what it does is allow you to wind up a robot a lot faster in order to get it going but you might be wondering what the heck robots even are and in order to get this accessory you need to watch this video right over here which is the automaton video which will show you some really op robots you get from dompe so check that out click on this seriously it's they're op